Welcome to IOTC In On The Conversation. I'm Pam Singh. And I'm Nikki Tanas. This is episode 3.99, a continuation of the flow of uh, Tantra 6 and relationships, a topic we recorded a couple, couple weeks ago. Yay! Uh, I would just like to, we would like to thank everybody for all their positive feedback, uh, personal yes. and public. So thank you for showering us with all your love. Oh my God. Yeah. Thank you. In, in highest appreciation of that. I'm, I feel very blessed. Pam. <laughs> We're getting all our giggles out and that's okay. Yeah. Uh, Pam, before we start, I want to say something. And As always. Yeah. I know this is kind of a different, I'm shooting it in a totally different direction. It, it doesn't really have anything to, well, it might. Um, I'm going to talk about accountability for a second here, and I'm going to yeah. share with you all that Pam and I had shit weeks. Has it been two weeks since our last episode? Yeah, I think it has. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So this episode here that we're shooting, we were going to, yeah. we were supposed to, we agreed to release on Valentine's day. Correct. And we fucking didn't. <laughs> yeah, because, we did not. you know, this energy wave that's happening. Yes. That I know you all are feeling. Um, well, um, I, I, I don't know about you, but I've been, I feel like I've been bitch slapped and like punched and all sorts of things. I got a new glass prescription and these are progressive. Anyways, I got to do this to see you because I can't really see you all that clear. Okay. And I've been a monster to myself this week. And needless to say, there's uh, a lot of meditation and a lot of, uh, I needed to grab my own tools. So this is what it means to be accountable and be committed, especially to, and it's not just, yes, first and foremost, commitment to you, Pam, and Mm -hmm. even more importantly to all of you, because we both committed to you guys to bring you an episode, if for nothing else, entertainment. But I know we bring you some value. I hope we bring you some value. Mm -hmm. I know it means a lot to me and Pam, I know it means a lot to you. And because of that, I wanted to share this and say, look, we didn't do it. And last night Pam called me up and said, you know what, Nick, I need some, I need you to be responsible and sometimes say, Pam, we're shooting tomorrow when I'm like humming and hawing about it. Yeah. I've been kind of agreeing and that's why we haven't shot because we've been feeling crappy. Mm -hmm. We've just had less than moments, right? Tough moments. Tough moments and our tough moments, believe me, they're tough. I'm not saying they're any worse than all of your tough moments. They're just mm-hmm. tough moments mm-hmm. where we're feeling like, oh, you know, life force is being sucked out of you and we have all the tools. And you know what? With so much, we've done like tens of years of personal development and, and we still find it tough and continue yeah. to do so. Yeah. We'll I never get always, it done. Never get no. it done. So it was important for me to share with you that. You know, this morning I got up and I'm like, and just before, you know, Pam, you woke up, I'm from the future, I'm ahead. You woke up, you're (laughs) like, how are you? Yeah. Are we going to film today? Yeah. And you notice I looked at my phone and I didn't answer you for a while. I did notice that. Yeah. I was like, until I tell her we are filming, I am not. You know what I was doing? I was having a battle in my brain because the first, you know what my first response wanted to be? Oh yeah, no, I'm not feeling up to it. And just every fucking excuse in the book. Mm -hmm. I'm like, no, I'm going to get in alignment. I'm going to sort this out. I'm going to, I'm going to connect this and we're shooting. And I am so happy we're here because I'm really fucking excited because I used my heart. Yeah. Yes. And I used the heart's code and I talked (laughs) to my heart and I said, come on, highest intelligence. Yeah. I'm going to let you lead the way. And yeah. that's my commitment, my personal commitment to you and to all of you. So thank Hi. you, Pam. Thank you and for sharing that. That's bold. That's, it's important to me. Yeah. I promised to keep it real. We promised to keep it raw, open, authentic, and real, right? Yeah. And here yeah. we are roaring. So there you go. That's my little, uh, okay. That was a, that was a lar- large roar in that. It's actually a, thank you for sharing that. Thank you for your vulnerability in sharing that. And I love how that ties into our topic of also like trust and accountability, whether it be business partners or partners in general, 
yeah. when anyone's feeling down or whatever to um, actually voice, hey, I mm-hmm. feel like shit today. I need your help. Or, hey, I feel like shit. I need more support or I need whatever it is that you need at that time. So thank you for sharing that. My pleasure. And if I may just segue just one more little bit. Sure. It's our, it's our profound communication skills that we have. Yes. That you're able to communicate to me about anything and vice versa. Yeah. And we yeah. know how. Yes. Right? And yes. that is the key. Profound calms. Because if we didn't have that, we'd fuck around. And we don't. No. That's mm-hmm. okay. That's fucking important. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, that's a really good um, nugget you put there. Uh, thank you. That's fucking huge. It's communication and open and bold. Yeah. <clears throat> so, wow. So I think um, as we're sharing our heart space, then right, we're we're, we're opening this up. Uh, as we're sharing that, it's a good segue into uh, what we were going to talk about and expand on more, which was The Heart's Code, a book by, uh, I believe, Dr. Paul Pearsall. Uh, yeah. We'll send a link link down in the comments. It's a really good book. Uh, I've heard from others and myself. It's it's very dense in medical terminology and all that. But what I it's resonated phenomenal. with... It's phenomenal. It is phenomenal. What I resonated the most in that book was his voice of how he, being a medical doctor and in that community felt since we're talking about being open, he was very open how it felt like this science and this new way, uh, this new expression of the heart and what, mm. how it's, how it's cha- uh, challenging the current, uh, you know, medical system or opening or expanding it a bit more. He said he, he felt like a bit like, not like an outcast, but that, um, he, he wanted more of this to be involved in the scientific community, more of these kind of discussions about the heart and the heart's code. Some of the things he brought in there that I want to touch upon, because uh, there's a lot of examples and case studies in there, was I believe he was, he was going in for, um, well, it was like heart surgery or something. It's been a while since I have read the book, so I'll just be honest about that, right? And he was going in to get his heart examined, and he really hated, disliked, displeased the machines because they're very clunky. It made him feel uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And I believe one time in the book, he started talking about how he changed his ideology. He changed his mindset on the machine. And he started, and and that's why he said people might think he's a bit crazy for doing this, but he started talking to the machine. And giving it heart-centered love. L energy. He gave it L energy. He gave it love energy. And he said that the machine started to behave differently. It was more compatible with him. And he didn't quite know what to say about that. Mm-hmm. I, uh, I guess that's, that's where he was, he, was, he was afraid for the scientific community because they were going to judge him. Thank you. That's exactly it. That was the emotion involved. That was the judgment. Thank you for saying that. From his own peers, right? And yet he wanted to put out this magic, this magical... Book of magic, heart magic, right? That uh, talks to machines, AI devices, um, and other things, right? So I really appreciated him saying that because I went out and I, I thought about that story when I was driving. And we're going to connect this with Mana shortly, okay? So oh, I, was, okay. I was, I was, and you can you can touch on that because okay, big Kahuna, right? So uh, <laughs> your, your nickname, right? Are we going to share it? Should we share it? Yeah. yeah. There you go. I don't that know who time. gave you that, but there you got that time. Okay, so <laughs> so I was driving my car, and all of a sudden, um, a flash or a light came on, and the light was saying there's something wrong with my transmission. And I was in the middle of nowhere. I was like way out somewhere. And I just thought, oh gosh. And I'm like holding on to the steering wheel. I'm like, this is not happening, right? And it kept telling me to pull over and the car kept beeping. It like every, gosh, it was like every minute or even even more more than that. Really? I was just like, yeah, it was beeping. And I was just like, okay, this thing's gonna <laughs> self-destruct in 10 seconds, right? <laughs> so I pulled over and I turned the car off and I tried, you know, turning on again same message came up and I, and I knew intuitively with the car I knew intuitively 
that uh, it wasn't a transmission thing. I, I, I knew it was a glitch in the tech. That's how I, I just felt that. Okay. And at the same time, the, the story from the hearts code from Paul came up and I was like, okay, I'm going to go give this car some love. And I just, cause love, love energy is all energy, right? And I, I just put my hand on the steering wheel and I, and I just, I kid you not, I was just talking to the car. I said, I love you. Thank you for, for being here. Thank you for being my transportation means that I can get around easily. Thank you for, and I just, I, I placed my hand over her. I know we don't have to personify a car, but this is, I put my hand yeah, over do. her, right? And I was just like, thank you for, you know, being there for our family. Thank you for all the car rides. Thank you for all the times I needed, I needed you to, when I, when I needed time out and I just, we needed to go for a car right. ride and you and I, you and I heard music together. Thank you for, mm. thank you for taking me to go see Henry, my turkey. Yeah. Thank you for all these fun times. And I said that. And I went on this rampage of appreciation for the car. And then I'm like, and then I, I thought about the story, right? And then I went and I turned the car on. And lo and behold, there was absolutely no beeping, no sounds, no transmission uh, errors, no low on mana. Oh. Right? I wasn't low on heart energy anymore. I lifted her fuel gauge back up. I appreciated the fuck out of her, the hell out of her. Yeah, so you literally, I you did. just brought goodness into her. And she worked ah. and we had a great time. We went, we headed all the way down. I think it was Bunsen up by the forest and things like that. I, I, you know, I was picking up something, a package and it all worked out great. So I know I'm making a reference to something here that Paul also talked you about in the book. Her, you gave her mana, you gave her love life force pam you gave her life force energy because that's what mana means yes can you expand more on that yeah the word mana means life force same as you know the key in aikido or the 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 chi in tai chi yeah. or the shakti or prana in the sanskrit language yes so um, there's many different words you can use, but mana is one of them. And the Hawaiians called it mana, called it life force. And um, in Hawaiian, the te the teaching, you know, there's the kahuna, the, the yes. teaching of, of the huna by the kahuna means to empower <laughs> life force. Okay, the, okay, so I can't remember how the, the big kahuna came up a long time ago. And <laughs> I remember when I told you, I'm like, did you know my nickname is the Big Kahuna? <laughs> I and, think I laughed okay, so hard. For all of you, we're, in, we're actually in Maui. And oh, she God, is pissing her pants laughing down the street. <laughs> and we actually went to Lava Java in Maui. And Lava we're, Java, we're shout out to Lava Java. Can we give them a shout Yay, out? Lava Java, oh my God, yes. Best coffee ever. Best. Oh, in Maui. Love you guys. We will tag them down below. Fucking awesome. Okay. So we're walking down the street, and you know, there's stores, and we're shopping, and yes. this one, you're like, you're like falling down, laughing your ass off, and I'm like, what? She's like, do you see what you're standing under? I'm, I'm entering a store, and there's a store, it says the big kahuna with this giant size um, surfboard, and I'm like, yeah, and I'm like, just, I'm all of five foot nothing, right? Yeah, so, that's, it's just... <laughs> But you, you, you were you were military and you just have this very fierce personality about you. And I still do. Thank you very much. Yes, and it comes yes. out when, it, when she needs to. Yes. The lion comes out at times. Right. Oh, God. So, <laughs> thank know, you for sharing this. Empowering and empowerment. <laughs> You're giving life force. So, the yes. Kahuna, so you know what? There's no... See how in life nothing is ever a coincidence? Everything mm. is perfection. So, you know, it's not coincidental that I'm a life coach and I'm a vibration. I do. I teach a vibrational alignment through my own. And yes. what do I do? I yeah. empower people with their own mana that they have it within them. Oh, you so know, thank you for sharing that. I wanted to say, when you say you empower people, right, that reminded me, um, you know, with their own heart energy and their own alignment. Mm -hmm. Remember the game we used to play? It was a, it was a terrible game, but uh, 
It was like, uh, it was called Champions or something, right? It's a video game. And you go on this no quest. <laughs> no mana. Oh gosh, no mana. And that was the thing was that when you're, you would go on a quest with your players, right? Your other co-creators. And uh, some of them have like magic spells where you can like, you know, it's almost like where pa- paramedic kind of does the boost and it's like, boom right? On your heart. Yeah. Where is it? Right? Yeah. On your heart. It's giving you an electrical That's current right. and a charge to your Life heart. Force. Life force. So what happens in this, in this game is that if you don't, uh, if your life force is going down, which is blue, it's blue energy, I believe. I think it was yeah. blue. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, like etheric, right? So as, as that goes down <sighs> and you don't make it, uh, you die. If you have no life force energy, you die. And then what happens is when you die, the character yells out, no mana, no mana, right? Like that. And, and it, <laughs> it kept saying that. And then it wasn't until, well, when we were doing our research and our personal development that we actually understood that that word wasn't some made up word off of a game, correct? Yeah, it was I like, didn't know that. I don't, was know, like well, I don't know what point we, yeah, we were like, it's like chicken and egg when it, when it came first. But it was just like, we're like, oh my God, that's where the inspiration came from, from, the kahunas mm-hmm. and the ancient shamans in Hawaii. And they, they, yeah, and they know, you know. And it's interesting because this, this dates back to before 750 AD, you know, wow. and there was this, this, this wave that they were trying to de- de- um, destroy these teachings for some reason. That wave went all, all over the world. Nick, and isn't it... it- isn't it? May I intersect here for a sec? Please you do. talked at the you talked at the beginning of the conversation about a wave. Remember yeah. about the energetic cosmic wave. Yeah. So isn't it interesting how it's kind of coming full circle here with the wave here, mm-hmm. um, and we're talking about Hawaii and Hawaii or Maui actually has jaws, which are the really huge waves. What does the it feel like? In the world. What the biggest in the fucking world? But what is it? And what does it feel like when the wave hits you? No mana. No mana. Your life is life is sucked right out of you unless you learn to ride it. Unless you learn to surf and ride the wave, to go with the flow, right? And it's okay if you fall up and slip or whatever, but you know what? You just get back up again. So I mm-hmm. really love all the analogies, and I, I'm starting to see how everything's connect, connecting, as you just said, Nikki Tanas. Things connect to other things. The little book of coincidence. Always. All right. All right. <clears throat> um with that being said see how this is all connected no it's how this is all connected and what it means to have a tantric relationship yes and um you know and it's not just having a more um sexual um it's not all about sexual pleasure. It's about sensual pleasure, the intimacy yes. on a sexual level and a sensual level when you combine the two. And it's the art of communicating with one another that, you know, brings you closer and closer and closer. And I mean, fuck, what are we all here for? What mm-hmm. are we all here to learn? Relationships, mm-hmm. right? We're all, in mm-hmm. a, we're, we're all in a relationship. You and I here are talking about... Um, romantic relationship with a partner yeah Yeah. right but i mean there's like the myriad of relationships professional all sorts but on a romantical level right um i don't know i'm just taken aback with how it's all connected from the mana to your story on the heart's code and how the heart is just infused I, I, didn't, I didn't even, I don't know if I mentioned this, but one of the things with the heart energy that I want to touch upon was that uh, I believe one of the case studies was when somebody was, um, when somebody received a heart transplant, mm. they started to receive memories of the individual's heart that was trans. Dr. Pearsall talked about that too, didn't he? He did. No, well, that's what I'm saying. That's where the oh, reference yeah. came from. Was through that case study that he talked about memories were being exchanged, and it, it makes it begs you to ask the question: Where do memories come from? You know, because mm. we always have this this favoring of the mind that it's you know like a data storage center, and that it's like a filing system. And there, and as uh, you know, I use the analogy that somebody uh, shared with me, one of my dearest friends, 
about a, a librarian that goes there with her books and she's kind of shelving, you know, I, I love that mm -hmm. analogy. Um, and so we look at memories being transplanted and also food preferences were changing due to a heart transplant. So there's Ooh. more to be discovered here. And that's what, uh, you know, Dr. Pearsall was talking about was, you know, <clears throat> in his book was to engage in open more of that mystical mysticism of the heart mm -hmm. that we haven't even scratched the surface medical community as well to to uh, expand as all communities do to expand more and evolve evolution love and evolution more on that topic and be more open mm. about these things so I know I know it's kind of like I know we're like you know we're you know, tantric sex and relationships, and we talk about the heart. I like how I do enjoy where this conversation is going. I feel like this needed to be said because as Agreed. we talked about accountability, direct communication, and direct communication, I wanted to add on that was talking to somebody and not feeling like, oh, I'm going to hurt this person's feeling. You're not deliberately trying to hurt this person's feeling. You're trying to no. express something to someone without fear of judgment. That's right. And you know what? As <clears throat> if something comes up, see, yeah. you're you're expressing this is this is what I need. And this is, you know, uh, you're expressing yourself yeah. now if so you're delivering that message. Now, if me, the listener or whoever, I'm just going to use us as an example, right? Yeah. If, if I get a bit if feelings start, if it's like emotions come up. Right. Well, there's a reason for that. They have nothing to do with you and everything to do with me. Right. Right. So that's the that's the relationship. That's right. what we're talking about. Safe, safe space. Sacred space. Yeah. Creating a safe, sacred space. Because we always we hear people talk about that, you know, during tantric sex and, and creating a, that kind of partnership with your partner. Mm hmm. But what I would like to do is just dive a little bit more into like, what does that mean to people? What does that actually mean to somebody to create a safe space for somebody to go express what it is he or she needs to express in that moment, mm. which I feel, which I feel without, okay. without judgment, like the exercise, we'll, we're, we'll talk about the exercise later that will end off like the chair ex exercise with clothes on and we're talking about intimacy but that's creating a safe space. Oh, that's a good one. Yes. That's creating a safe space. But what does that, Nick, for you, how do you define that for your the, clients and for yourself? That Because I know you have, and this is, a, this is a hot topic. Yeah, that sacred space. You know, Pam, I got to tell you, there is nothing more amazing and there's nothing more beautiful and that... I am in love with this. I, I, I literally am with that, with what gets created in that safe space between two humans or three humans, right? Whatever it may be. And why are there three know, humans? Well, maybe sometimes, well, we're talking, you're, what is it for me as a coach, right? Which is okay. like, I coach the person or maybe sometimes it's couples, right? right. Husband, wife, okay, wife, sorry. wife, just... husband, husband, whatever. Right. Yes. But, what does that mean for me? Well, it means everything. Mm -hmm. And you know what? It is that unspoken word. Mm -hmm. This is where we tap into, we, we trust. This is where self-trust comes into trusting your intuition and trusting that thing inside of you that we don't know how to put into words. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, you, you meet someone and you just innately trust them or not. We all have that. We all have that sixth sense. We were going to talk about that too as well, but go ahead. But when you just yeah. know, is there a thing Is there a thing of just, do you just know when? I just know. I, I can't put it into words. Mm -hmm. And it's because I know me and I trust me and I trust my higher, you know, my celestial team, like yeah. my power team. They're yeah. always with me and, and I call upon them. I mean, I do my my habits right i yeah. have like my specific habits that i practice and i exercise to get myself into the zone into the flow into that space before i enter with another human yeah and i mean that means everything to me and i know 
because I know that about me. Mm-hmm. When I'm in the presence of someone else, I instantly, my presence demands theirs. My tr- own trust in me demands theirs. And if they don't have it, I will feel them. That's and I will true. Know. Yeah. Like vibration so, discord. But interesting how it lifts them into that. So I don't know what it means. You act like a, like like you're grounding. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you for. I was just like trying to find the right word. I'm you're like, basically that's exactly like the, gra- the, the grounding conduit. You're the anchor. Thank you. That's a, that's a really good analogy. And you know what happens? And this just happened with um, uh, my last guy, my athlete. Mm-hmm. He's like, God, I just feel so safe around you. He actually came out and said it in our first mm-hmm. meeting ever. He's like, oh, I can feel like I can tell you anything. And I've and he's not a talker. Mm-hmm. And he was just talking and talking and talking. He's like, I've never talked this much since I was born. <laughs> that's cute. Seriously. I love that. I love that, though. That's cute. So that's what a secret space is to me. And I mean, you know what? To have that in a romantic relationship, it's huge. You know what? It's It's huge. Mm-hmm. You know what? A lot of a lot of people don't have that, and they don't mm-hmm. know why their relationship isn't working out. And one mm-hmm. of one of the one of the many, but one of them is like they don't trust their partners. They don't. I don't know. They don't trust themselves, mm-hmm. right? They don't have. They have something, some sort, something that's holding them back. And mm-hmm. you know, you got to be willing to communicate about it. See how there you go ties into everything communicate about like your insecurities about your vulnerabilities about hey i feel this or that and then also um get you know we're talking about get to a point where you where you celebrate you celebrate to that your accomplishments right like you celebrate you're like oh my gosh yeah we did it like go treat yourself treat yourself since we're on this topic of the tantric tantra the tantric relationship yeah i mean to be honest in the thrills, and I'm going to say this, in the thrills of passion, to be honest with your partner, because you're getting to know your partner as much. The waves, the energetic the waves. waves, the thrills of passion, the, 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 the waves of emotions yes. and energy and mana and heart energy that comes during That's that. That's right. You know, a lot of times people are with their partners and one of them starts doing something that you're not okay with. And... Okay because of the lack of that trust they don't communicate that right and they start building up then they go through with whatever it is i'm not referring to anything in specific but you know this comes this example comes to mind and then they build resentment and and then i I have an example for that too oh good because then that creates a gap between them and they start distancing instead of coming closer instead of actually saying so here's the example yeah uh, one of my friends was saying this uh, about shoes. Somebody doesn't like shoes in the front of the hall, right? Okay. So your partner comes, leaves, leaves his or her shoe, right, at the front. And let's just say uh, you are the one who, who likes a clear path, but you don't talk about how you want an open, clear path to the doorway. You allow the shoe <laughs> to be there day after day, week after week, month after, maybe even year after fucking year. But could you imagine like the stretch back like the bow and arrow space yeah that you know like like an arrow like why does cupid have an arrow right with the heart and you're you're shooting aim and even with qigong when you open your heart center uh what do you do you you do you know right you do that right again like you're opening That's your chest right. space so what happens is they blow up like you're talking nick and then, and then yes. you have this expectation of like everybody should beep beep beep, beep know that yeah you shouldn't put your shoes in front of the door, but they never said at the beginning because all that self-talk shit that comes up. All that buildup of resentment and the other person had no fucking clue. Yeah. No, and they're like, whoa, why are you yelling at me? Why didn't you tell me? <laughs> why didn't you well, tell you me? Well, you should know this. Yes, or what? Yes. Well, you know what? And that is the beautiful, the destructive assuming, you know, and to, and I'm going to use this. Assume, never assume a fucking thing because then you make an ass of you and me huh? there you go but it's true though it's, it's so true. simple yet it's so true you can't assume that the other person yes they should know but not everyone <laughs> is on the same wavelength right it's yes. like I didn't know picture ass that my shoe was right there I thought it was okay 
what a great example. And you, you know what? For all of you, you'll, you, they'll know like the things that you pick on your partners for. You'll, and you'll then, know. Everybody will know. That's right. And then if you have all these these little things, a series of little things, a little moments in time add up to a big disastrous, right? A, res, a resentment, a big ball of resentment. And then, so, so the takeaway is catch it early. Catch it early because that little resentment of your shoes or the trash or the whatever, you know, mm-hmm. toilet seat up or down, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yes. That you bring that into the bedroom. So unless yes. you talk about it, how are you supposed to be passionate with, you know, your loved one or yeah. how are you supposed, right? You got to deal with these things. And what I would like to segue into now mm-hmm. is I would love it if you could, um, we'll, we'll talk about two things because we're heading into time here, but like, I, yeah, if you could, could you, could you share your story about, uh, you know, we're talking about if you want Simon and Peter Max and when you just oh, know. This is about love it. You just know. And mm-hmm. I think it's also, it could also be love at first sight. Okay. So I'm talking about Simon Laban. It's the band, you know, he's uh, the lead singer for Duran Duran. Yeah. yeah. I'm a Duran Duran fan. Always was. Yeah. And uh, I read that somewhere. Well, you know, you know things about them. Yeah. And I saw him in an interview where he was telling, um, he was being interviewed and he's like, how did you know? Because he believes in love at first sight. Right. And he's like, I saw this gorgeous human being, this gorgeous woman walk by. She's a model, whatever. He's like, I just knew she was going to be my wife. And I told my friend, I'm going to marry her. And he fucking did. That's and not only awesome. that, not that's, only that. That's awesome. Seriously. That that's, is awesome. Yeah. You know what's even better than that? And I'm going to yeah. include myself in there a little bit. Yes. Um, a friend of mine many years ago said, hey, I got a couple of backstage passes to Duran Duran. Because, you know, we went to see Duran Duran, the four of us. Right. And I'm like, you've got to be shitting me. Yeah. And I went, we went backstage and it wasn't just backstage. You get into this room where you have like canapes and hors d'oeuvres and drinks and whatever. You get Seriously? To That's yeah. awesome. And they come in and I'm like, I was like, fucking pinch me. So I can't believe this has happened. It just kind of happened. Right. Yeah. And I was wearing a leather jacket that I bought in Europe. He's like, oh, cool jacket. Yeah. And I'm like. You know what I said to her? I said, cool story about how you met your wife. Love at first sight. He says, yes. You know what? And he's he's like, yes. And we're still married and we're going strong. And he's like, I knew, I knew from the woman, I from the woman, from the moment I saw her yeah. that she was going to be my wife. Yeah. And you know what? The power of intention and the power of knowing. And he just followed his heart and he went and he said, I got out of my comfort zone and I went and I did everything. It, it just, it's magic. Hey, Nick. He followed an impulse. Ta. Like, yeah. so, oh, um, seriously, that's an amazing experience. How, like, <laughs> you watch the interview, you're standing in front of him, you mention the interview, and, like, you get that response. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. I mean, it was just a few seconds, right? A few, like, it wasn't, like, a long, it was a few moments, because there's a lot of people there, right, that he was being kind to, and I'm like, I was like, fuck. And I'm not like a huge Duran Duran fan. We're like, oh, I got to go see them. And I got to, it just happened. It happened. It fit into place as it did. It flowed. It flowed. I want to hear your Peter Max story. <laughs> okay. Remember we were on, on, an, uh, on a cruise, our AP yes. cruise. Oh, the Alaskan cruise. Yes. Yes. Our, our, okay. We were on a cruise to Alaska. Mm-hmm. And there was an art auction that was taking place. And one of our friends was there and we're all like giggling and laughing at the back, having a good time. And one of the paintings that came up was Peter Max's painting. And the auction, the auctioner, or the, there's a term for that, but he was telling a backstory about this painting because what Peter Max did in his paintings, and you'll see it, is that, and again, this is me recalling this, this, this memory, right? But what Peter Max, uh, did and you'll see he he always drew like this the silhouette or profile of a woman's face, mm-hmm. and he, it would it almost became like an obsession where he just kept seeing this woman, right? 
And I can't, I'm trying to recall this story the best, but I, I believe he was sitting somewhere, might have been at a cafe, cafe or something, I don't know where, but he saw the woman from across, it was like one of those across the street things or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And he was like, oh my God, that's her. That's who I've been painting this whole fucking time. That's who I've been painting. And I believe he ran over there. I can't, I cannot recall the exact words he said, but uh, mm -hmm. um, so I just, I'm just trying to remember what, what the auctioneer said, but uh, that, that's his wife today. Like that's his that's, wife. That's the woman he married. He married. He married. He ended up marrying her. See, and that's why I feel like these magnificent stories that I believe in from people who like share these, uh, mm -hmm. like even with me and, and, and my book, and I say with Venus, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, I just hear this voice that I've been um, talking, gosh, like two or three years ago, right? And I was just like, it's just an image. It's, it's like an image or a voice and I feel like the presence, as if this person's already there, right? This woman's already there. And yeah. I feel like we both kind of have that thing where it's just like, um, you'll just have a sense of knowing. I feel like I will have that sense of knowing. Like yeah, everybody do. else, when you see, when you're like, oh my God. I, I thought it was a really me, cool story. You will, you will know. And, I, and, you, and you will know, because we always. And I do. Yeah, there you go. All right, cool. Yeah. Cool. Okay, so should we end it off with an exercise and we're out? Yeah, I would love Let's an exercise, that. Pam. Uh, you have the okay. best exercises, so which one no, are you going to give us? Okay, so the exercise is going to be uh, clothing on exercise. I like this because um, I like this one, okay? So now that we talked about sacred space, it's like a quiet space, right? And we talked okay. about all the components and things that, that, that go into that emotionally. So if you can sit in a room, have two chairs, sit across from each other on two chairs and facing each other, facing each other and, and give some space right between you two, but not too much space. We are like on the other side of like a building, but like, you know, like you're close. A foot or two. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and then just sit there and just, Make sure it's you're uninterrupted, like you're not going to be interrupted. There's no there's no technology. Your phones no, are no on silent. Out of Thank the room. You. Actually. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Totally out. Mm -hmm. And as you sit there looking across from one another, actually visualize maybe like a circle around you two, like unconditional love, no beginning, no end. Just like time, no beginning, no end. Just like mm -hmm. death, no beginning, no end. So as you sit there in, in your visualized circle and, and you uh, draw and say, you know, you call upon your own unconditional love and you shower your partner with unconditional love, I invite you to ask these three questions. And you can change it around. Okay. So the three questions I would ask, I would have you ask of your partner, right, is to say, I think one is, how do I help you grow? How do I help you evolve? Oh. And we touched on that on a professional relationship, which was, hey, I need you more to this, or, I, or yeah. you know, right? Like that. That's how you grow and evolve. So you share that, and you allow your partner to say whatever he or she has to say mm -hmm. without interruption. And do you both do that? You don't to even have to. Yeah, you don't give a reply. You just listen and take it in. There's no, oh, but what if, and it, there's no solutionizing here. Just hear her out or hear him out. Okay. So that was, how do I make you both? Uh, the, other, the, the other question is, what are the things that you like that, that I do for you? Whether like acts of service or things that you enjoy? What are some of those things that, that you like? Or love. Or love. I like this question because sometimes uh, in partnerships we're, we're like in this, sometimes people, 
can get it get stuck into a very critical format where it's like, oh, you need to improve on these things. And then you forget about all the cool things they do for you. Right. Mm -hmm. And remember, and then once your partner knows that positive psychology, positive reinforcement, they're like, oh, I didn't know you like that. I didn't know you want the shoes removed or whatever. Right. But that's different. Mm -hmm. But like, whatever, like, I love it when you give me poems. I love Mm. it when you call, I love it when you call me out of the blue. I love it when um, we go for our alone time for walks. I love it when you take me to my favorite restaurant. I love when you order my favorite food. Like that kind of stuff, right? And then just shower. I love it. Oh, I see. So I love it when you come home and the first thing you do is you give me a kiss and then. Yes. I Um... love that. That's awesome. That's a good example too. That's the second question. And remember, these questions are fluid. I'm, I'm just saying whatever needs to be said in this moment. So there's the, okay. you know, the, ev- the evolution. What are the things that you love about? And to keep it physical, the physical component of it, getting back into the body, say, ask your partner where they love to be touched. Most. Most, right? In that moment. And mm-hmm. then if you can, as you talk about I love it when you, when you talk about, you know, if it's like a caress or something gentle or whatever it is. Okay. Visualize. You can even close your eyes. Don't touch each other, but visualize that occurring. Oh, so this is, this is an interesting exercise, Pam. It's a hands off. You're just looking at each other. Yes. Talk about the art of communicating and leaning into those uncomfortable feelings. Yes. And feeling that rush of emotions go through you. Oh, I like it. And then you finish that off. You finish it off with um, once you're once you're both complete, you thank each other for your openness and honesty. And then you finish it off with I'm giving you kisses and picture your partner visualizing kisses all over your face. Just L energy. And you tell them where and you tell them. them where you're kissing them without kissing them. But don't say it fast and be like, you know, I'm kissing you here. Just be like, hey, not even hey, but like whatever. It kind of feels kind of silly and goofy sometimes when you do it at the beginning. Whatever your pet first name time. is for each other. Yeah. Pet names or, you know, darling, blah, whatever. 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 And, and then just say, I'm kissing you on your forehead. I'm kissing you on the edges of your eyebrow. I'm kissing you on the tip of your nose. And then ask them, can you feel the warmth of my lips? Right? Ask them right? Mm. Can you feel the sensation on your cheek? Can you feel the sensation on, I'm kissing you on, on your chin, on the edge of your chin. I'm kissing you down your neck. And now that you know where they like to be touched or how they like to be kissed or how they like to be adored or showered with love, do that. And then just send kisses all over their body, like those little heart kisses, right? Yeah. And just like, you know, like, like just, just shower them with all that. That's and beautiful. That's- and that's how you end the session. So I have, a, I have a question. So the one partner who starts, say, I'm sitting across from my partner. I start, do I go through the three questions? And when I'm done, they take their turn and go through the three questions? I think um, or does it what, I find, what I find is like, no, that is a good question. What I find is that like each partnership is so different and unique. Some may want to do like, the turn things and okay, well, it's your turn. I find that um, if one person asks usually, and then one, one is a giver, one's a receiver in that moment. Okay. Play that out. Okay. And then, and then maybe another day or at the end of that session, reverse it and do it the other way around. Oh, so that session is like, whoever's the giver is going to be it for the, that. Yeah. One's going to be the Q, the other's going to be the A. Mm hmm. Well, that's it. We did it. Yeah, we did it. Nick. <laughs> oh, gosh. I'm proud of us, Nick. Me wow. Too. Huh? I'm proud of us. OK, I'm, this is good. Well, that's a good that's a good. Uh, this is a good time to wrap it up. Yes, I think we're out of time as well. Yes. So thanks, Pam. Thank, Thank you, Nikki. everyone. Yep. Thanks for thanks for watching us. Thanks for being us. Thanks for playing with us um, as always. We love it. If you if you love what you see here, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, hashtag IOTC. And thanks for staying tuned. 
for next week, episode number four on death. You know and, what? Can I say something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Sorry. Go for it. We just talked about love, sex, and death. LSD. And what does that lead to? Rebirth. Rebirth. Did we, did we not post oh, we this don't... months ago? And here we are. Yes. Oh, my God. We did. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Nothing is ever a coincidence. Everything yes. is perfect synchronicity. Yeah. Because after all, we're, we're, we are in te- we're part of the greater story, the greatest story that ever. Yes. Okay. And I'll shut up. And um, so, yeah, until next time, thanks for staying tuned. And, oh, my God, you are going to want to see the guests that we have on deck. And, Pam, your first guest is, like, blowing it out of the water. <laughs> Oh, you let the cat in the bag. He's, oh! Okay, well. Well. That's okay. All right. Stay tuned. Bye. Stay tuned.